Forge from Iron is proud to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham United fans and friends inspired by the work of other football fan food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations from Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply seven distribution centres in the borough, seven days a week, and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. They are supported in their efforts by West Ham United Football Club, the WHU Foundation, LS185, London Legacy Development Corporation, Newham Council, the Met Police, Spire London East Hospital, Expedient Security, and a large number of West Ham and football fans. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thank you for your support. Hang on, hang on. I didn't press that button, did I? <laughs> we can edit it out. We can edit it out. They'll never know. They won't suspect a thing. Back in the room. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Falls from Iron. And we are here today to discuss the small matter tomorrow that takes place in the West Midlands. Uh, Molyneux is the destination for David Moyes' men. Wolverhampton Wanderers are the opponents in match day 19 out of 38 in the Premier League. Duke, it seems to be a little, well, it has been a little bit of a while since our last Premier League outing, obviously away at Leeds United. I think probably a better showing than we've had of in recent matches. Um, you going into this match with a bit more confidence than, than was otherwise the case or no, I didn't think so. <laughs> oh, you're having a giggle, boy. I know, you know, I know. Like, literally, come on. Um, yeah, we 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 went out against Brentford in the cup, and we played some football. Um, again, same same shit we've been served up for quite a while, Rob. To be fair, yes, we got three points out of it, but it was still the same dross. Um. Don't get me wrong, I actually quite enjoyed the feeling that we got off the back of a win. You know, that, 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 oh, it's quite fun. Um, the, the celebration of a goal that actually meant something rather than, you know, it just being a, an absolute shit show. Don't get me wrong, mm. it was still a shit show, but here we are, kind of, <coughs> we're, we're through. So, Tomorrow, tomorrow doesn't fill me with confidence, Rob. In in mm. no way, shape, or form. Um, I've been watching, you know, the other channels in in the build up to this. Um, you know, Gonzo's videos in the morning, yep. Patreon stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I made I made some comments earlier in the uh, in the WhatsApp group, Rob. I don't know if you saw them um, regarding Potter. Chelsea, um, Brighton, and, 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 and the likes. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll quickly touch on that here, if I may. Um, you know, when, when, when Potter was at Brighton, he had kind of full um, carte blanche over the playing squads that they play this way. And his idea for that, which I completely understand, is if the first team play this style of football with this sort of formation with these tactics and game management. I want all the other teams to to play the same way, same tactics, same formation, same game management. 
Yeah. The reason for that is if any of these players come through the ranks and they get into the first team, then they know what's expected of them. And my prime example of this is going to be, I believe it was Odebeko. Yeah. Uh, United in the FA in the FA Cup, the Carabao uh-huh. Cup, when he came on as sub, FA Cup, and then was taken off as sub because yep. sub sub didn't work for him because he didn't have a fucking clue what he was doing. Now that's not him. He hadn't trained with the first team that week. He didn't know what was expected of him. Now, if <clears throat> if all levels play the same way with the same tactics, same formation. When a player is expected or is asked to make that step up in a certain game, then when a player like Oli Skulls, for instance, is asked to step up into a a West Ham first team after playing left wing in a 4-4-2 high press and he comes into the first team and he's expected to play in a 3-5-2 wing-back that doesn't go past the halfway line. Um, and we we kind of just sit deep until they come at us. Um, has he expected to fit in? And it, my, my thoughts on this one, this is why we never see any of the, the kids come through in games that matter. Because they don't know what they're doing in our first team, Rob. And that's the scary part. There does um, seem to be a disconnect, doesn't there? It's, it's it's massive, Rob. Massive disconnect between our under twenty ones PLT to our under eighteens that you mentioned earlier in the chat when they beat Aston Villa. Was it five two? Five two away. Yep. Seems to be working now. Doesn't twelve it? out of twelve. Um, and this is why we don't see the kids or any of the the, the, the follow through because we don't play the same football. You know, if Moyes decided he was going to take the entire, you know, playing setup and go, this is what we're going to do, maybe players would be able to step up. Maybe Ashby would be in the first team and wouldn't be looking for a move to Newcastle in the next couple of weeks. You know, we'd be looking at... <coughs> I hope so, son. Um, I'll have what you're but, having. But yeah, I, I mean, sorry, I, I kind of diversion there, but it kind of fits into the game tomorrow that we won't see any of the kids. Um that's what it is, isn't it? It's it's frustrating. It's annoying. It's, I mean, I'm uh, listen. James is incredibly excited, quite clearly, mm. for tomorrow. I'm not quite sure why or how. Um, he's he's that excited. If I'm honest with you, he's overdosed on the old sherbet dib dabs. I think he might have done. Oh, that's very bright. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm not confident in the slightest, mate, no. to be honest yeah, with you. The only thing that I will say, I think that in the previous two games that we've played, I have seen a few glimmers of improvement, of alterations that give me a little bit of optimism. I'm, I'm not going overboard. I'm really not. But it does seem to me that Paquetar is being deployed more like he was for Brazil in the World Club. Up. It does seem to me that Thomas Socek was getting forward in the um uh what was the game? Was it the uh Leeds or Brentford? What was the one what, he didn't play yeah. against Brentford, did he? Oh no, no he did play against Brentford or there was one of the games where he was getting he was getting forwards more noticeably than he than he has done of that would have been Leeds if I remember. Yeah, yeah. There was one of the games where I sort of thought, oh, okay. And it, it, all right, fair enough. It didn't go in. And, you know, but I mean, if he if he gets a good contact, he gets a goal and his confidence is absolutely brimming. So there are things that I've looked at in those last two games where I've thought, oh, okay, okay. There's there's something there. there and they, I'm now thinking maybe they are still playing for him. And if they, if they are still playing for him, we've got, a, a chance. We've got a chance, but we're in a dogfight. I mean, I don't know if you realise this. The four teams at the bottom of the Premier League all play each other. We're playing Wolves. Everton are playing Southampton. I mean, this is a massive weekend for for the relegation. Those relegation places. Well, it's actually a big weekend for football, Rob, because you've also got the Manchester and the North London derby yep. um, over the weekend as well. So, and I think you've got Leeds Villa tonight, if my memory serves. So. Okay. Um, there's there's some interesting games of football, some some little uh, you know some side notes to them as well. Just touching on Alex's comment 
um, next couple down. He says there that on Gonzo's video, and, and again, I was going to touch on this later, um, that Poch's agent actually approached the club saying, look, my 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 uh, my my charge, if you will, um, is, is actually interested in, in your club. And on mm. both occasions, Sally has gone, now you're right. Interesting. <sighs> Which I think probably... In, in my view, I mean, it depends about when do we know when this actually happened? Was this before the World Cup break or has this been more recently? Within the last been... within the last six to eight weeks. So it could have been during the World Cup this yeah. happened. We don't know. Uh, to be honest, I think once they came out and said he's, he's in for the three games after the World Cup, I think that they were kind of they, they painted themselves into a corner rightly or wrongly. And listen, I've I've told you my feelings on it, and I think everybody here knows. I think you should have gone after the Leicester game. I make no apologies for saying that. Yeah, and I'm listen, and I'm saying that as someone. Oh, Rob, wasn't it? Mm, I'm saying that as someone that has a, a great deal of admiration for for his achievements in. And when I say achievements, I know people will turn around and say, "Well, was he won?" Yeah, I'm I'm talking about compared to where we were and what we've been Hang on, in. Rob the years before he sort of like walked through the door, he's got us a sixth. He's got us a seventh. He's got a European semi-final. Thank you very much. But, but 180 million to spend in the summer. And yeah, I've expected more. And, and this is, this is premier league football in the year 2022 to 2023 is that patience is a commodity that's not in ready supply. So, it's all very well to, to point to things in the past and say, well, you know, this happened before and that happened before. We are where we are. We're in the year 2023 and we're in the Premier League and there is no such thing as patience. You know, the the, the consequence for failure is the sack, generally speaking, Duke, rightly or you've, wrongly. But you've only got to look at across London, mate, the... Exactly, that's happening right now. There's there's calls for the head of Graham Potter, which I find absolutely absurd. He ain't going anywhere. Absolutely absurd. Um, there's a comment there from Alex, uh, a couple down. Um, I, I'll be honest with you, mate, I don't like that. Please don't. Yeah, wish, Alex, there's no need for that, mate. Don't wish death on anyone. Um, I don't like the guy, but I don't wish he was dead. Um yeah. Uh, no, the whole Potter thing at Chelsea, mate. You're saying there that it's a results business, and he's lost. What is it? He, he'd lost his first ten at Brighton in his first two seasons, or he hadn't won in his first ten. Um, right. Yeah, Steve, I would, I would. Um, on on the condition, I'd take Harry condition, Potter at this rate. We need Harry Potter. Um, I I take Potter on the condition that it was a it was a Brighton setup. It was a Brighton setup. He goes in and he builds. Fair yeah, point. he has. But if you give Potter time, he can make. I mean, I'm not being funny. He made Brighton a very, Just very don't good get start. time in the Premier League, Duke. No, but that's, but that's the problem, Rob. It is a results game, and I get that. And clubs like Chelsea are not going to hang around. Clubs like Chelsea are not going to sit and wait and be happy with a 10th place finish this season whilst Potter builds and creates uh, a squad in his image like he did at Brighton. They're not, they're not happy for that. Hmm. Um, now, that being said, there are some clubs that, that can. Yeah, that, you know, we can, we can afford to appoint Potter, Rob, in, in my opinion. Because at the moment, we've got, Fuck all. Um, as in project, you know, I read something on Twitter earlier, which which mm, made me think that that Chelsea, that Chelsea, um, Chelsea fans are say, saying that they want instant success. Thank you, my man. They want instant success over a project. They should they shouldn't be having projects like. Liverpool and City, they want instant success and trophies. Now, well, that just tells you everything you need to know about a fan base of a club that pretty much only came into existence when Roman Abramovich bought the club. 
they were they were a fucking nobody club at that point. I'm sorry. Um, I don't. I, I'll, I'll sit there and argue this toss with with Chelsea fans until the cows. Well, they come had on. qualified for the Champions League. They <laughs> won FA Cups in the seasons that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, but they weren't a big club. I'm sorry. No, I don't no they weren't the club they, they later became. I'll give they you that. They, you know, they're not even the best club in London. And, and here they are stating that they're a big club and all this bollocks. And, you know, a lot of their fan base actually only appeared out of the woodwork in, in, in back in the early early 2000s when Abramovich took over. And let's have a look at something. Um, same, you know, I, I've, I've said it many times on this channel. I've got a lot of time for... Um, I got a lot of time for City and City fans. Um, the, you know, if you if you look at the way their fans were when they were down in the doldrums before all this money came along, they they still had their fans. I mean, thirty thousand at Main Road in Division Two, Division Three. You mm. know, their fans were still there. They're loyal. They're like us as a fan base. They're like us, um, and they stuck by their team. Um, and and here we are. You know going you know they've, they've they've paid their penance and now they've got something coming you know newcastle newcastle huge club as in fan base much like us rob i'd, I'd say that huge loyal fan base like us they've paid their dues and now they're, they're getting somewhere um i'd like to point out in much the same way as gonzo did this morning um, Wolves are trying to do to us what Newcastle did to Burnley last year. Hmm. Um, you know, take their players and cause them some <laughs> cause them some problems. Uh, we need to win tomorrow, otherwise um, we could be looking at a disastrous final. You know, few months of the season. Yeah. <laughs> he did, well, Trudge. Well, he did. Whilst we've been chatting, I had a little poll running on the channel. And if anybody's been watching on either Twitter or Facebook, please hop across to the YouTube channel. There's, we've got some polls that I'm going to run through the course of this. The first one we started off with was a real simple question, asking what formation would you like to see deployed against Wolverhampton Wanderers tomorrow? The three choices, the four choices, excuse me, were 4-3-3, 3-5-2, 3-4-2-1 and 4 2 3 one which 433 was the winner, 57% of the vote. We're now on to the next one, which is it's, it's the goalkeeper. And it's goalkeeper is, is just two down to two names. It's Fabianski or Ariola. And this is not necessarily what you think they would go with, it's what you would go with if you were in charge. So if you're on if you're on the YouTube channel, pop a vote on there and uh, we'll have a little bit of fun with it. We're not picking the team, so it really doesn't matter an awful lot. Um before we talk about what we think. The, the respective teams will be, or certainly in the case of the boys in claret and blue or whatever kit we're wearing. They're the they're the uh, the officials. Simon Hooper is the ref. We've got the assistants who are Adrian Holmes and Mark Scholes. I don't know if he's related to Paul. Very much doubt it. Fourth official is Craig Paulson, not Craig Dawson. Uh, VAR is David Coote and the VAR assistant is Richard West. Duke, um, Talk to me. Your, what are your thoughts on the eleven that you'd like to see tomorrow against what the eleven is you think you will see? Listen, I've I've made this argument the last three or four games, Rob. It doesn't matter. It for me, it really doesn't matter who um, who starts, who plays where, what formation. It really doesn't matter if he sets us up to not engage until they get within. You know, eight yards, ten yards of our box. Hmm. If he doesn't, um, if he sets us up to concede possession high up the pitch and let them stay, you know, let them keep the ball until they get within eight yards of our box and we don't try and press or engage. If he sets us up negatively, it really doesn't matter what eleven you see. Listen, we could we could pick an eleven now that would include. Right, I will tell you what, if you turn around and said to me, pick your pick your best West Ham eleven ever yep. that you've seen. You know my West Ham eleven that Russ used to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I had I had McClos going goal. I had Dix. Uh, I, I believe I had Breaker in there. I you know Potts, Mister Dependable. Um, Decanio, Cotty, McAvenny, Carrick, 
you could pick a team of our best West Ham 11s, Rob. Put Moyes in charge and they would foul fucking miserably because he doesn't like to do anything other than what we have seen. He, um, he, 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 he defends deep. You know, he doesn't create. We have two of the, um, we have two of the, uh, two, two internationals, sorry, that play key roles for their club. Yeah. I think he means, um, well, no. I was going to say, it's Dawson that's traveling from the Manchester area. Rochdale, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Not Antonio. Um, Antonio's over sort of south. He just London. likes he just likes crashing his car into people's houses dressed as a snowman. Hmm. Um, you know, it, it, for me, it doesn't matter, Rob. If he, if he's it, it really, I couldn't give two shits what team he puts out tomorrow. Um, if he plays the same tactical setup, you can even even go to a point. He could play two centre backs. Uh, he could play two centre backs, six midfielders, and two strikers. But if he doesn't change the way that the, the style of play, we're going to have everyone defending. It's it, you know, yeah. We, as I say, we've got two international players that play key roles for their country, Paqueta and um, and Skamaka, uh, and and here we are not seeing anything out of them. You mm. know, uh, point in case was a game earlier in the season where, you know. We didn't put any crosses in until the seventy-second minute of a game, and we only put crosses in when Skamaka was taken off and Antonio was bought on. Why? 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 You got Men's a player that's six foot, like six foot three, I think he is. Skamaka is a big fucking lump. He's, yeah, we're not, he's not a midget. We're not putting crosses in for him. Have a look at the goal he scored against um, the Danish v-ball. side. Viborg away. Uh, the boy in the box near post flick Bang. volley. No, the flick volley one low into the low into the near post six yard area. Was that Lee Borg or was it? What was the other? Who's the other one we played? Mm. The other Danish mob in the qualifier. I didn't. I I thought Antonio was South West London. I'm sure he was South West London, not Manchester. I mean, look, I could have it well, wrong. Listen, if they might be on something, but... I'll let them go. They'd be happy with that, mm. wouldn't they? Um, and, and listen. As as far as I'm concerned, in, in the great, like I said, in the grand scheme of things, you know what? If, if players don't want to play for us, regardless, listen, I I, I will take my hat off to both mm. of those players. Okay, both of those players. You know, as as Gonzo said on his video this morning, did he come in, and did I expect him to be the Craig Dawson we've got? No, not at all. You know, we we got an absolute cult hero, legend, legendary cult hero out of out of Craig Dawson and, and the way that he's been. Um, you moved to Manchester a year ago. Have you got any idea on that? Why why would you move to Manchester when you've been at a London club since 2015? Well, it's, mate, get that. mate, it's no different to Craig Dawson. Craig Dawson's been at our club for what two years now. Three years now. Yeah, but there's a world of difference between two years no, no, no. and, and no, seven. No, no, But then eight. he was at Watford before that, Rob, for three years. So he's been playing for he London wasn't there clubs. three years, was he? He's been playing for London clubs for about six and a half, seven years. Yeah. And still lives in, in Manchester. Well, the part of that is... Yeah, but, problem, but he's it? moved up there. He's a South West London boy yeah, well, playing for a London club. And a year ago, he moved yeah, to no, Manchester. He, Why? Well, he was living in Manchester, uh, in Nottingham for a while as well, wasn't he? Yeah, but he's been in <laughs> South West London. His family are all from sort of like Tooting area. Oh, Dulwich, I'm Dulwich, have and all that, lot, aren't they? Tooting hmm. and Mitchum, all that area. I don't understand why. Why has he moved up? It's not not starting to do with that um, that fucking podcast he does with um, Callum Wilson, is it? Possibly. Is that a factor in this? I, don't, I haven't got a clue. Right, Duke. We've we've done the poll for uh, goalkeeper. I know. I voted. You voted. Um, who yeah. did you vote for? May I ask? The the, the winner was Ariola, seventy one percent. Ariola, yeah. Who who? That was your vote, was it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Well, I'm about to close the poll at right back. You've got three choices. Have you voted? Uh, yeah, I have. Yep. Yeah. Hang on. I'm gonna come off camera a second. Two, two. Oh, bloody hell! It's all going right. Wrong. Okay. Well, I'm about to end the. 
poll, once Duke tells me that he's cast his vote, uh, you've got three choices. Johnson, Kufel or Kara. I thought I'd put Kara in just for the comedy value, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, him at fullback, no, nah, you're all right. I mean, even at centre-back, I think. Uh, not so sure. He's got a rick in him, that boy. Um, and I keep trying to tell myself that he's he's a German international and he's very, very highly rated and trusted by Hansi Flick. He's played in the Champions League final for PSG, but Jesus Christ, he's... He, he does like to make it. The, he he does, does like to give you a heart attack, doesn't he? He does like to keep you on your toes. Right. I have you you cast your vote, Duke, or have you disappeared and left me? No, go on. I'm still here, and yes, I voted. Right. Okay. I'm going to close the vote now. So Kufal is the winner there. So we've got Ariola and Kufal as the two starters so far according to the falls from iron community 58 percent for kufal so i'm now going to put your choices in for left back guys so don't don't go anywhere so your left back choices i'm probably only going to give you two because I, I don't think i'll give you johnson as a left back choice and care as a left back choice really can i if i've given you him as right back probably johnson, not. you could probably... but not care Johnson, you could, but not care. Yeah, but I think if yeah, well, yeah, I suppose after he's showing at least, probably not. Um, I'll just, I'll just give you two to choose from, guys. Um, real you simple. Got a in there. Mm, nah, you're right. I'll keep him for the centre back pairing. I'll just go Cresswell and Emerson. Uh, I th think I know. Well, mind you, I mean, some people would say it's really not much of a choice. It's, it's sort of someone that's slow, but is a or half decent defender shit. against someone that, that's a lot quicker but can't defend his fucking dinner. <coughs> well, so, I'll tell you what, you lot are mad. What's that? They're mad. They're, they're, right. they're absolutely off their rockers. Well, is there, is there any, well, 14 votes have been cast so far. I mean, we've yeah, got and, and, and I explain, people. Okay, here we go. Come on. Get up there, boy. Slam your votes in, guys. Come on. And girls, on. of course. Let me open 15 other YouTube accounts. <laughs> Oh dear, but yeah, I mean, I I did a, a sort of like an eleven that I thought would take to the oh, pitch. But I don't know on. if you guys have heard. It, it would appear Craig Dawson is very likely to not be involved tomorrow. So I'm hearing you. Yeah. You heard about this? Yeah, I heard that he's going to be omitted from the squad with the. Uh, the I don't the, know if that's the, definite though, is it? But I think. X well, listen, I'd, listen, probably. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if something, my God, what is wrong with you lot, sort your shit out. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, mate, if um, if there's been conversations that they obviously want him. What do you mean, please not Cresswell? Kate, please, please, darling. Um, now, you're looking at... It's, it's the same sort of reason for Pope not playing for... Not in the forest in the cup, Rob. They're they're gonna do. Yeah. They they want him. They want him to be able to play. So that you know, because they don't want him to be able to play because they want to be able to buy him. He goes out and gets injured. So I'm guessing they've agreed for you know a little bit more cash, if you will, in the coffers if yeah. we don't play him tomorrow, so he doesn't get injured and they can buy him and bosh away we go. You yeah. see what I mean? I'm just trying to find the. No, I can't find it now. Ah, it's... shit! Can I change my? No, actually, no. I don't want to change my vote. No, I don't want to change my. You don't vote. want to change vote, right? I tell you what, right? We've got. Come on, there's 19 votes, but there's 40 of you watching. Come on, put a vote in, guys. You know, let's let's see what we can do here. I mean, you, we we all think we're we're managers of one way, shape, or form. So go on, you got a choice. Pick. Pick Emerson or Cresswell at left back. It's it's real simple. You've, we've chosen the formation. We've chosen a goalkeeper. We've chosen a, a right back. Thirty-seven of you watching now. So three of you have buggered off. I've got twenty-one votes. I'm going to end the vote in five, four, three, two, one. Madness. Close Absolute the door. Emerson's at left back, ladies madness. and gentlemen. Emerson's at left back. That's an interesting. I, I, I understand what some of them are saying. Um, about Cresswell's pace and everything else. But I think Cresswell defends better if he just sits. Do you know what I mean? So if he, if he, if he sits 
mm. and doesn't get forward, he's not going to get done for pace. He can. He's actually a better defender for me than Emerson. Um, listen, if they decide to play a Dharma Traore, we're fucked either way. You say that. He hasn't exactly caused an awful lot of ripples in the Premier League this season. No, no but hi, we're West Ham. Yeah, there is yeah. that. There is that, I suppose. Um, <laughs> right. Your centre-back pairings. I am going to include Dawson. Because, this, like I say, I want to know what you guys would do. Um you ain't enough, no, I'll tell you what. No, I won't include Dawson. No, I won't. I'll give you another candidate. Yes, I think we've got to go with... yes, 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 and twice on Sunday. Yes. Right, here are your choices as, one, as the centre-back one. pairing, ladies and gentlemen. They're coming in now. Oh, hang on. No, not that one. Hang on. Come on, Robert, sort your shit out. Sorry, I just realised I gave them the choice of Aguerd and Kera twice. <laughs> right, there you go. You've got, you've got four choices. You've got Aguerd Kera, Aguerd Zuma, Ogbonna Zuma, Aguerd Ogbonna. The first one to vote. Yeah, there you go. Right, okay. 40 if you're watching. Right, we've got seven votes already. Get stuck in, guys and girls. I want to I wanna know. I really want to know what, what you guys think. Um, we've got seven votes, we, we, 11 we got, votes, we got, and <laughs> it's unanimous. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. 16 right. votes. Oh, is there's been a slight change in a slight change. 16 votes. One person's ballsed it right up. Oh, Jesus. And they're under starters orders and they're off. Right. Okay. Here would be my team if I was picking the 11 dupe. And you, you guys can, can sort of pick it apart and do whatever with it. As I say, this is if I was in, in the dugout and I was picking the team, I'd have Ariola in goal. And I've said it many, many times for the reasons why. I don't think that the shot stopping between him and Fab, there's an awful lot to choose. But I do think he would give us an extra dimension on the counter. I think he would get us moving from back to front an awful lot quicker than Fab does. Because you know what Fab does. He'll get the ball. He'll fanny about with it. He'll allow the opposition to get retracted, get into position, get into their shape. They're set. Much more difficult to break down. I think Ariola would be able to sort of like to see some, get the ball and literally look up, see someone on the move, bang, find them. So I think that would, that would be my choice. Centre-back pairing. I think if he's fit... I would be playing Zuma alongside Aguerd. I, I, like I say, I'd, I'd like to involve Dawson, but from what I'm hearing, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's not going to be involved. So it is what it is. So I'd go with, with that partnership, Aguerd and Zuma, providing that Zuma's fit. If he isn't fit, then I think you're probably going to have to involve Kara. I think you're going to have to, because it's either that or it's a Bonner and, Mm, I'm not. I know the Og Bonner of a year or so ago. I think I'd have I'd have had him straight in, no problem. I'd have had no no real hassles with with that. But I think that he's not that same player anymore. I'm afraid he really isn't. So I, I think I'd go with Kara if if Zoom is not available alongside Aguard. Then at left back, I would go Cresswell on balance. I think defensively he's better than Emerson. And I think if you're playing as a defender, you have to be good defensively. I know he's got his deficiencies. And I'm not for one minute suggesting that he is the answer. And, <clears throat> you know, in, in, in another another situation, I'd, I'd like to, I, I would have liked to have had a recall clause on the contract, the, the, the loan arrangement of Manny Longello, because I'd have pulled him back like a shot, mate. I'd have pulled I him back. I thought you were going to say bloody half a Masuaku, then. No, you? no, 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 no. I'd rather, I'd rather leave my cow in charge of the in uh, the company of McDonald's, you know, rather than putting a Masuaku at left back. Thank you very much. Um, so I think, I think I would, I would go Cresswell left back, right back. I think I probably would go Kufau if he is fit, and I don't, I don't think he won't be. Um, evening, Stephen. Hope you're well. Um, I would then go with three in midfield. I'd have Declan holding. I'd have Paketar central mid. 
and I would I would have four nails. I think his energy is going to be absolutely crucial tomorrow. Whatever you think about Paul four nails and his shooting is not the best, but I think that the the energy that he has in the centre of the park, I think we're going to need it tomorrow, mate. I seriously do. I think he's yeah. go- he's going to need to be involved from the start. And then I'd go with a front three. I'd go with Ben Rama on the left. I think that's that's an absolute must. I think Bowen is starting to show signs that he's on the road to recovery in terms of his form. He's not at the heights he was last season, nowhere near it. But I do think that he is beginning to get back to his old self. So I would have him on the right. Now, the question is, who do you go through the middle? Well, to be honest with you, it's it's... You've got Antonio who wants to leave by the sounds of things. Uh, and this is the really weird one. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Did he not say so long, not so long ago that he, he wanted competition? Am I right there, Duke? He did say yeah. that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got competition <laughs> and now he wants to bugger off because he's not first choice. Um, I'm going to end the um, the centre-back pairing question. The answer was the, the, the um, winner... Aguirre and Zuma with ninety percent of the vote. I think that's 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 a good one. I think it would have to be Skamaka as the nine, because as I say, what what else have you got? I mean, you uh, uh, the only other option you've got, I suppose, would be to play Bowen as the centre forward, move him into centre. Um, would you then move four nails across to the? to the right of the front three and then maybe drop Lanzini in to replace four nails in central mid. It's probably the only other option you've got, I'm guessing, or maybe involve Flynn Downs. But then would I have Flynn Downs as a central mid? No, I probably have him as the defensive mid. Does he get into defensive mid ahead of Declan Rice? No. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult, mate, because I'm, I'm very much in the same sort of... Um, I'm in the boat as you. I, I want a workman-like team. Hmm. Uh, we 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 need we need eleven players out there willing to bust a bollock and and give everything, leave everything out on the pitch. Um, give uh, just make sure that we We, we work. We, we need a, we need a team that are going to work tomorrow, work hard, work hard for each other, work hard for themselves, up and down, up and down, up and down. There can't be, we can't have people that we're carrying tomorrow. There has to be 11 players out on that pitch that are going to work bloody hard. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, are you, the thing I don't get, and I, I think I've probably said this before, Duke, um, you might have mentioned it as well. How did we get to a position? How did we get to a point from the David Moyes that walked through the door and the don't start, don't run, don't play mantra? And our stats went in an upward trajectory very, very quickly. We was obviously lagging behind in sort of like distance covered under the Pellegrini era, or the last days of it in terms of tackles, in terms of interceptions, blah, blah, blah. And David Moyes turned that <laughs> around. How are we now at the position, or how did we get to the position where our stats dropped so dramatically? <coughs> because he has his favourites, Rob, and that's the issue. Mm. He, he has his favourites. I don't think there's any two ways about it. He's, you know... Players, I, I know what you were saying the other day about it, how you felt that players are not playing for him or, you know, they look like they're now playing for him or, or whatever, you know. It's been a however, definite improvement. But however you were, it's pretty low. But it's, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, it's, it's a curious situation, Rob, that we, we can only speculate about. I mean, you, we, we're not going to be able to give any definitive answers. Because the, you know, there's only a set of people that are going to know, and that's the players, and that's Moyes. We can only speculate unless one of them comes out and says, "Yeah, no, he's a prick." Mm. Then you're not going to know any different. So you know, and, and speculation doesn't do anyone <clears> any favors. Um, I can say it how I see it, and that's you've got a set of players that don't want to run. You've got a set of players that don't give two shits. Mm. Um, 
Suchek being one of them at a certain point. I don't know if he doesn't give a shit. I just don't think he's good enough, Duke. Well, that's that's a great point that Hammeret made. Yeah, see, I, I, great I think, point. Listen, listen, spoke uh, a mouthpiece, bald mouthpiece, noble. Yes, he's come back, but he's still going to be a bald mouthpiece now. Um, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's his role now, sadly. Yes, he's a West Ham boy. Yes, he's one of <clears> us. <throat> yes, rather, rather. But he's still going to be that mouthpiece. You only have to look at that final game at Upton Park. We're not running like a circus anymore. Shut up, Mark. Listen, you, you've been given a script to read. You look like an absolute wank bag right now. Mm. Um, and, and unfortunately, <clears throat> we're just going to get more ball bites out of him. Um I, I hope to just God to I'm proven wrong. Sorry, just to, just to mention, we've just finished the poll for the defensive mid. You won't be surprised that Declan Rice won it ninety three percent. That his his a position was in that position. Downs, Socek, and Coventry. Downs got the other six percent of the vote. No one went for yeah. Socek or Coventry. Not really a shock. That happened not really. Anyway, I'm going to put in the central mid pairing now. So. But what are your thoughts on a score prediction, Duke? Well, I say I want to be confident, Rob. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually going to be cautious as well. There's part of me that... If we go... If we go with a very much a workmanlike performance, players that want to go out and give, players that want to go out and do, players that want to go um, work fucking hard tomorrow, then um, we shall see a positive result. I feel. But if we're going to go out and we're going to play like we don't give two shits, mm. the... I, I think there was, I think there was Charlie. That's just my opinion. I mean, you was, you was at both yeah. games. So I you've probably got a slightly, you've got a different perspective on, on anyone that was watching it on, on the old telly in the South of France. I, I get that. Um, so you might have a slightly different interpretation of things. Listen, turn up, show up, do is, has got to be the mantra for tomorrow's game. Leave everything out there. Grind. Listen, I don't give two shits whether we grind out a win, one nil win, um, backs to the walls, nick a goal. Remember the Arsenal game, Rob, when Rob Green played the game of his life at the Emirates and Samora Bobby Samora scored lobbed, only goal. Yeah, lob. Was it Layman? That's it. Lob Layman from about seven though. yards. I don't care if that's the game tomorrow, Rob. I don't care. I want to see a workmanlike performance. I want. I don't. I don't. I tell you what. I want to see. I want to see eleven genuine heroes tomorrow, yep. and not eleven wank bags. Fair, fair. Well, the central midfield pairing vote is running on the YouTube channel. We've got the choices are Paketar and Socek, Paketar and Four Nails. Socek and Four Nails, Paketar and Lanzini. Hmm. Have you had a vote on this one, matey? Uh, no. Let me go. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, so I was. I'll be honest with you, mate. I was trying to see what the um. I was trying to see what all the kickoff was. <coughs> Elsewhere, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, the reason that the reason that our lovely Hammerette pissed off. Oh, hey, what? The the reason that Miss Hammerette, the reason Kate disappeared off the uh, off the stream because she had to go deal with uh, had to go deal with some wank bags over on West Ham Fan TV's Friday Night Pint. That's my oh, new no. word today, by the way. That's not good. That's my new word of the day: wank bags. What, wank bags. Yeah. Is that what you're going to describe us as if we go out and stink the place out and get? Our trousers pulled down. Yes, very much so, sir. That will be a word that I use on Sunday as well. Um, uh, should I use that in the titling of the of the review if it comes? Yes, to yes. Pass? If we lose, wank bag eleven. 
You heard it here first. That's what I, 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 I've now, I've now got to put that into the title. If we, if we get smashed, that's that's going in. Indeed. So don't blame me. Blame Duke. It's all his idea. It's all his fault. Right. I'm going to close the pairing, the centre midfield pairing. I voted by the way. Ninety-five percent of you have gone for what I would choose, which would be Paquetar and Four Nails. Ninety-four percent have some of that. Right. Um, you carry on chatting, Duke. I'm now going to put in a poll for the, for the left <coughs> of the front three. Yeah, no, I, like I say, it's got to be 11 heroes tomorrow. They've got to go out. They've got to earn. There can't be any, there's no celebrations, just heroes, as uh, Peter says. Maybe 11 quality streets. Um, you know, and then Happy says, best you don't get on the pitch, then Crocs. Nice. Thanks. Zini doesn't, yes, Zini does need a game hammerette. Back in Argentina. Uh, I was happy when Skamaka and uh, Paqueta turned up. Yes, Trodge, I think that was that was a key part of the chat. You know, the, the, both of them played really well. Um, it'll be I interesting. Mean, listen, if tomorrow, like I say, we go out, we play well, and we grind out a result, workman like, um, then I think we'd be all right. You know what I mean? I, I do yeah. think we'll be okay, but it has to be a solid, grafting, workmanlike performance tomorrow. Has to be. No two ways about it. I don't see this being a high-scoring game, Duke. No, I don't. How about you? I don't think it's going to be a high. Sc- I don't think it's going to be terribly entertaining. If I'm being brutally honest. Um, oh, did he? Ah, oh, I forgot about that. Well, then, then again, Pete. You know he. Uh, who do they have last week? Um, Mubama and Swire scored for the 18s last week. And the next day, they were in the match day squad for the Brentford game. So you never know. You never know, Pete. It could happen. I've given you a choice. I mean, I got a funny feeling, and I could be proved completely wrong, that he, that Lan, Lanzini will probably get less votes than Ollie Scarls. I bet you any money. You'll probably find that now, on the basis of that, people are going to vote for Lanzini just to, to sort of like make me look like a complete tit. <laughs> uh, but no, I don't think this is going to be a high scoring game. If you look both the teams, both teams have struggled to score goals in the Premier League this season. I would be surprised if there is a victor in this match, if that team scored you know, had had more than a two goal margin over the opposition. I think it's going to either going to be a one nil game either way, or, or let me rephrase that: a, a goal, you know, with the winning team by a one goal margin, probably a one nil. Yeah. Or a nil nil or a one one. Can't see it being a high scoring draw. Can't see it being one team or the other winning by two or three goals. Not going to happen. I'm. Oh God, I, I wanna I want to be right. And my heart says we're gonna win because we got to. We can't, that's, we can't that's go, the thing, we Rob. Can't we can't go to Molyneux and I mean a, a draw is sort of semi acceptable, I guess. No, it really isn't. Semi acceptable. <laughs> Pro- they, they they probably are, Pete. They probably will be. I mean, put it this way, I mean if we could go if we can go to Molyneux, get a draw, and I'm not I'm not advocating that, that, you know, that we should aim for a draw. I'm not. We should always aim for the win. No ifs, no buts. But if we got a draw away at Molyneux, which is not an easy place to go, let's be honest, Duke, it really yeah. isn't. And we then come back and beat Everton at London Stadium, four points out of six ain't bad, generally. If you can go and get four points out of six, you, you, you're doing all right more often than not. The problem is, as I say, this is a weekend where the four teams are playing each other at the bottom. If we draw, that then puts us on 15 points. Wolves are on 14 points. You know, if if Everton win, they go to 18 points and we're now in the bottom three. Yeah. You know, um, even if, yeah, I... I I don't like it, mate. I don't like no, it. No, no, but 
what do you expect? Yeah. Come on, I, exactly what you've just said, Charlie. Chat. Yeah. There's 50 of you watching. We've only got 19 likes. Come on, give us some likes. Help us out, guys. So we've got 24 votes on the poll- polls left forward. Skulls is beating Lanzini on that one, Duke. Yeah, I'm not surprised. But ben Rama's overwhelmingly going to win that. He's 88%. Yeah. He's absolutely pissed that. 87%. Skulls got eight percent. I thought he'd get more votes than Lanzini, and this is Ollie Skulls who's played the A-teams today. Um, <laughs> sorry, Happy. Sorry. I know. I know you're going to be sitting there going and making making a sort of little grumble and whatever. Um, I'm now going to put in for the for the right forward Duke. So if you carry on fluttering your eyelashes, um, I mean, I said it earlier, Rob, didn't I about the overwhelming kind of manager having control over like the tactical setup from top to bottom. If you're going to play a certain way, you need, you need all your players playing in the same way. Didn't you? I mean, I know Mm. that might be kind of really stupid for me, but if you like, I I play a lot of football manager, Rob, um, Mm. and I pretty much guarantee I'm not the only one that's here in the chat or whatever. Um, I'd like to think I'd like to ask other people's opinions um, on on the fact that you know you Can have I just to stop you there, Duke. Yes, I'm. Sh- Who else could I put at right forward? I've got Bowen, obviously. I've put Lanzini in there. Antonio. Just... Yeah, I suppose I could. Yeah. Then he's got Although to be one of the striker probably be over well, on the. Uh, he'd probably be over on the left, even if he does start yeah. up front. I think I'll just have to go with those three. I mean, it's 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 going to be Bowen. I think we know that, don't we? I don't think there's there's really much of a choice. Peter, give me more information, please. Talk that Skamaka has a bigger injury than we first thought. Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, really? I've heard about that. I'm like, oh Jesus, For fuck's that's not sake. good. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess we're we're gonna find out at f- what two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. If it, if Skamak is not involved in the squad, then I mean he's already had a couple of times out where he had he had something wrong with his gums earlier in the season, didn't he? Yeah, he did. did his he? Gums. Yeah. It's yeah. like how does that fucking stop you playing? <laughs> it's true. I mean, I I don't get it. I just sit there and think that's just that's like the dog ate my homework excuse, isn't it? Yeah. Fuck's sake. Anyway. Right, so we got how many? We got twenty nine likes, Duke. Drummed up a bit of custom. Forty four watching, though, guys. Come on, help us out. Pop over forty eight now. Pop over to the YouTube channel if you're watching on Twitter or Facebook. Give us just drop a like on the stream, and then you can go back to where you were before. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. Thirty one now. There you go. Yeah, that little bit of little bit of rattling at a tin. <laughs> um, as well as being poor in incoming transfers, we have no idea. Went to sell players. Lanzini and Cresswell should have been sold a year ago. I think Lanzini should have been sold a bit more than that. That's just my opinion. That's that's Happy Hammerette that's just buggered off. I haven't been in the chat for a while. She's probably over on West Ham fan TV. She's had enough of that bullshit. Fair enough. Right. Okay. So, yeah, it's not really a surprise who's winning the the playing at the right forward. Bowen, 91%. Mr. Bailey's in the chat. Good evening, Mr. Bailey. Hang on. It's all right. Um, oh, hello, Luke. How you doing, mate? All good? You're on You're on babysitting. Baby again, duty. Are you? There's a lot of oh, new babies in the West Ham. There is. West Ham YouTube community. And, uh... We're very we're very fertile when we get going. All right. I'm, I'm talking about the fans, not the not the team, obviously. Yeah, I'm going to be Very infertile. No, 91% said Bowen. Right, okay. Now I just need to know who's the striker. Right, so I, I suppose we're going to have to go... I'm going to have to put Skamaka in there because we're hearing a lot of rumours about his fitness, which may or may not be on the money, but no smoke without fire, I guess. Right, Skamaka, Antonio, Mubama. And I'll, I'll tell you, what, I'll, give you I'll give you a, a, a bit of a wild card. I'll give you a fourth choice striker, Kamari Simon Swire. There you go. You got four to choose from there. First vote. Oosh. Who you voted for? Go on. Oh, listen, I've gone for Skamaka. Oh, you have? 
yeah, yeah. Say he's injured. Would you would you put Antonio up top against the team that he could well be playing for in a week's time? Yeah. Of course I would. I'll I don't think I... if he don't score. Thing is, if he wants to leave, there's a part of me that thinks, fuck it. You know, you, you don't want to play. If 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 he doesn't want yeah, to play for it, if he's mean. looking elsewhere, I'd just be like, stick my barmer up top. Yeah, no, you know, uh, you'll... I see where you're coming from. So I, I mean, Alex. Alex agrees. Mubama is his quality. I agree. I think he's he's a top. We was having this chat actually. Walshy will bear this one out. Loans, we're crap at it, aren't we? We're yeah. crap at loaning out our under twenty ones, our under eighteens to teams. And I I made the point. I know you you a little bit limited on your time, Duke. So you might have to disappear. But I'll get your yeah, thoughts yeah. on it. And the guys in the live chat. Correct me if I'm wrong. We're we're part owned by a guy that part owns Sparta Prague. Yep. So why don't we use that as an avenue to send out promising young players to test them against men? Mate. You know, we I mean we 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 send them out to clubs like we we've sent who was it um who was it at Newport County? It was uh, Thierry Nevers, wasn't it? Yep. Listen, yeah, he's, he's come back. We've, we've, we're fucking useless at it. Listen, we have we have um, affiliate clubs. We already have affiliate clubs. We have an affiliate club in, uh, I think it's Belgium, Belgium League Two, possibly. VVV, VV Venlo. That's in Holland. Holland. I know it's one of them. Um, VV Venlo. We have an affiliation with them to be able to send low knees out. When was the last time we did? No, I know. Well, uh, earlier today when I sent out Ollie Skulls on loan on Football Manager. Not going to lie to you. That's what I did. Well, I would suggest goals. the Czech League is better than playing under-18s, under-21s football, Luke. Much, much better. They're playing much against better. men. First team football. Mate, Mate, I'll tell you now, I'd rather them go play in the conference for, for Ebbsfleet. Well, and get... I, I, well, this was another thing I turned around and said. Who else is in the conference, Duke? Dagenham oh, and Redbridge. Wouldn't... We've already right. got a sort of like a little bit of a loose yeah. relationship with them because where did the ladies play? They yeah, play exactly. at Dagenham and Redbridge. Yeah. So there's already that dialogue between the two clubs. There's already that that conduit of communication. Why don't we utilise that? We're absolutely useless at it. Yeah, I mean, listen, our, 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 our youngsters should be going out on loan to, to conference clubs, League Two clubs. They, they're like, I don't care whether... Well, listen, we've we've had this discussion before, Rob, where I've turned around and said that it, it won't look good on their CV. They'd rather be playing Premier League Two football rather than going out on loan and playing for Preston North End in a in a League Two, League One relegation battle or whatever. They don't want that on their they don't want that on their CV. They don't. They'd rather compete in the Premier League Two week in week out. So, uh, yeah, it just annoys me. We we should I'd, I'd, I'd scrap PL two. Uh, Brentford, Brentford do it. Scrap PL2 yeah, they, and they got rid send of them out on loan. Off you go. Go. If you come back and you're good enough, we'll keep you. If not, you can go out on loan again yeah. or fuck off for good. Yep. Fair. Fair. Right. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen in the live chat, we now come to the part where I'm going to ask you your match predictions as far as the scoreline is concerned. So, Duke, you're thinking... I'm, I'm going to give you this just before I shoot off because I've, I've, I'm obviously DJing tonight in the pub, so mm -hmm. I'm going to have to get going because I have to use the laptop and uh, the computer and everything. Um, I, mate, I'll be happy if we grind out a 1-0 win tomorrow, and I mean grind out a 1-0 win. I'd be happy to see us go out and, and spank them off the park and, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5 nil as James mentioned earlier in the chat. But that yep. being said... Um, a result tomorrow um, is essential, and I think we can. I I think we can. I think we can probably get. Um, it, it's sorry, Rob. Um, it's still there, uh, Alex. We still have it. We still have it. We just don't use it. Um, Crazy, isn't it? I'm actually going to go with a one nil, Rob. A ground out one nil win. Oh, my heart's my heart saying one nil West Ham. My head saying. Something different. I I think this is going to be nil nil. I think this is going to be two teams that are shit in front of goal, cancelling each other out. 
But then saying that, as Mandy says, two st- like you said, oh, Rob, two sorry, teams struggling. Sorry, two teams struggling for league goals. One all. Two straight. Two teams struggling for league goals. Watch it be an absolute blinding five all game. Watch it. <laughs> like you could not make it up. Yeah, but I don't think a point's really enough, mate. It's not I mean, enough. You know, it, 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 it could be an entertaining game, but to be honest, I'd I'd much rather have, as you said, grind it out, one nil win, dog shit football, but you've got the three points at the end of it, rather than getting a five all draw that was, you know, heart in the mouth for ninety minutes. Yeah, no, I want I want to ground out one nil. That's what I want. That's what I want to see. Yeah. Hard for well, one nil. Well, we've got a few predictions. Uh, we've got just go back, we've got Ellie May saying two one wolves. Oh, Walshie's going 2 0 Wolves. Oh, my oh, God. It's heartbreaking. Uh, right, Rob, I've got to shoot off, mate. I will oh, speak mate. to you. I'll, uh, I'll wrap it up. Yeah, I'll speak to you over the next couple of hours. Guys in the chat, thank you for joining us. Much appreciated. Sorry, I've got to shoot off again. Um, That's all right, dude. I will see you all soon. Take Cheers, care, people. Take it easy. Good night. So, Joan saying 2 0 West Ham. Charlie says 1 all. Yeah, um, this is your first away game in quite a, quite a while that you're missing, isn't it, old son? You, I don't suppose you got lucky, did you? I'm guessing not. Um, two streams struggling for league goals, 1-1. One, one. Paul says 1-1. One, one. Peter says, well, tell us if the players still have the balls. Yeah, we need we need 11 players. We need the manager. We need the coaches. We need the subs. All uh, step up to the plate. They've been, for the majority of this season in the Premier League, they've been sadly lacking in in a little bit of moral fibre, a little bit of intestinal fortitude, courage, guts, you know, a little bit of blood and thunder. Grind it out. You know, you're not playing well. Find a way to not lose it. You know, if if you can't win it, then at least don't don't lose it. You know what I mean? Um, Charlie, give me three points, whatever way it happens. A nice little four hours backside deflection again will do. 100%, 100%, mate. Don't matter how it comes. Steve says one all. Um, why don't we have a league with South End? I asked that, Alex. I, I sort of, you know, I said, well, South End, Leighton Orient and Colchester United, you know, East End of London, Essex, that sort of corridor. These should be clubs and Dagenham and Redbridge, I've already mentioned. We do have a, a relationship with them through the, the women's team. Why don't we use these partnerships, the, the Sparta Prague thing, to, to farm out something, you know, the under 18s are pissing that league. They're, they're 12 out of 12 in, in their in their division. They're absolutely smashing it. And some of the under 18s players are jumping into the 21s team because a lot of the, the 21 players have moved on from last season. So there's, there's a little bit of a gap. So every now and again, they're, they're pulling. I mean, they put, as I say, they had, um, they've, they've had Swire, they've had, Mubama, they had Skulls playing in the 21s. They're still like the under 18s players. Um, Stephen's come in. He says, 1 0 to the Irons. Good man yourself. And um, yeah, I, I don't know if anybody's seen it. I put a little thing out on the channel earlier this morning. Um, it was a little bit of footage that I've borrowed. It's a little bit of nostalgia. If anybody, and, and Stephen likes a little bit of nostalgia and, and all the rest of it. So. It's basically a bit of footage of the first meeting between West Ham United and Manchester United, which took place at the bowling ground Upton Park in February 1911. And no, I didn't go. Uh, Charlie, two terrible defences as well. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Um, can't be nil-nil. We always let one in first five minutes. Yeah, you, you make a good point. As I say, I just think that this is the, it, you know, I, th- I think this could be two crap attacks cancelling each other out. Um, and even against a shit defence, they probably couldn't score. So, uh, no idea of the score for this one, but Dalton and Antonio asserts to score. Oh, God. A um, few little goodbyes to Duke before he disappeared. Neil says it's a Desmond, which for those of you that don't know, means it will be a 2-2 draw. Um, fuming, first domestic one I've missed in about nine, ten months. Mate, honestly... I, I think you've done amazing a sort of to, to go to all these all these matches. I don't know. Your your missus is a very understanding lady. Um and he's still hoping for a last minute ticket. So if any of you guys watching this, Charlie, regular contributor to the channel, he is on the lookout for a ticket. And if you manage to sort of get hold of one and you can get hold of me or get hold of him, 
please do, because obviously, as I say, as you just said there, he's he's gone to every single away game for the last nine, ten months, and this is the first one that he's missed. It was a little bit of an oversight, a little bit of uh, a problem that happened, but if, if anyone can get him a ticket, that would be much appreciated. Um, no sodding about on the edge of our box, just clear it. Yep, yeah, you're absolutely right. Big game for Leeds tonight. Have they kicked off yet? Or is that an eight o'clock kickoff? Uh, we don't need them teams just above us winning. No, we don't. Absolutely not. 2-1 to the Hammers, says Fred. Uh, Charlie, we could do with a Villa win. Absolutely. Uh, Peter, no relationship with Orient anymore after they got into bed with Spurs. Yeah, yeah, there is there is that, I suppose. Yeah, I, I know they've sort of, they've moved over to the dark side. We did used to have a little bit of a, 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 a decent relationship with them at one point. But yeah, they seem to have, to have gone the other way along the, the North Circular, but hey-ho. I'd given up on nostalgia. It's not what it was. Fair point, Steve. Fair point. Um, he was only a pup in nappies back then, so couldn't go. Well, yeah, it was It was part, It was part. a long way to go back in those days, you know, on trams and steam trains and things like that. Uh, you would have been too young. He was only five. Thanks, Steve, and thank you very much. Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to bugger off. I'm going to bugger off. Um, please don't forget to drop a like on the stream if you haven't done so already. Um, make sure you subscribe to our channel um, if you haven't and hit the bell icon. We really would appreciate it. The channel's growing. We are at, last I looked, 1,483. So it'd be quite nice if we could get to 1,500, I don't know, by the end of the month, end of next month. I'm in no hurry. I, I'm not really sort of bothered to sort of it doesn't sort of keep me awake at night I mean don't get me wrong I want the channel to have as many subscribers as possible but it's not my job you know what I mean I'm this is not paying my mortgage I'm just doing this for a little bit of a laugh and the, and the back and forth um but, 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 Eddie's asking a question what's your opinion on Antonio leaving listen he's been a great servant for West Ham he's been a great servant for West Ham he joined us in 2015. I can't even remember how much we paid for him. I don't think it was a massive amount of money. And he he's played in all sorts of positions. I mean, once upon a time, he played at right back. He's played at right wing back. He's played at right wing, left wing. And he's obviously latterly played as a striker. He's our all-time re record Premier League goal scorer. And something of a cult hero. Uh, but all things must pass. He's, I think, what has he got? A couple of years, a year or two left on his contract. He's 32, 33 years of age. For the last year, 18 months, his injury record's been pretty decent. But before that, he was always getting hamstrings and this, that and the other. If Wolves come in with 8, 10 million quid, thanks, Antonio, for your service. See you later. That's basically where I'm at with it. And I wish him well for, for the rest of his career. Um, thank you very much, Mandy. You're an absolute gem. Walshy, hope you're well, mate. Um, Joan, same to you. And uh, mind them broken ribs. I saw that comment earlier. You said you got broken ribs. I don't know how that's happened, but hope you're on the mend soon. Charlie says, have a good one all. Enjoy the game tonight. Come on, Villa. Fingers crossed for a win tomorrow. Come on, you Irons. Steve's th saying thanks. Yep. Thank you. are welcome along. Um, you're welcome. Thanks for coming along. Um, thanks very much. Great show. Cheers, Paul. Much appreciated. Um, Ellie, mine is C uh, seven million pounds. Oh, that was Antonio. Okay, yeah, yeah, it sounds about right. I've, I had a figure. I mean, look, if we could get our money back, if we could get our money back on a player that gave us what seven and a half years of service, became our re record Premier League goal scorer, and at the age of 32, 33, we get our money back for him. I don't think we've done too bad business there. Um, thank you very much, Martin. Thanks for popping along, my friend. Um, and thank you very much indeed for you to you, Stephen. And, and thank you for thank you for allowing me to post on your your Facebook page. And, and if any of you are on Facebook, just to give Stephen's page a little bit of a plug, if I may. Um, Pop along onto West Ham to the on Facebook, excuse me, to the West Ham United nostalgia page. Um, this is a page that is dedicated to all things about West Ham's illustrious past. And as I say, I posted a little thing on there a little bit earlier on, which was a video about two minutes long of the the first game between Manchester United and West Ham United at 
the bowling ground in the year 1911. Anyway, I'm going to disappear, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have a great Friday evening and uh, hopefully three points tomorrow. I don't know what time we're going to do the match review. I probably should have spoke to Duke about that before he, he buggered off. But we'll we'll sort out a time. And uh, so make sure you've subscribed. Make sure you've hit the bell notification. And when we go live, you'll know what's what. And you can jump in and, and either celebrate, commiserate, whatever you want to do. Anyway, um, Iron Supporting Food Bank, please don't forget to give them your support. I'll see you again soon. Come on, you Irons. Forge from Iron is proud to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham United fans and friends inspired by the work of other football fan food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations from Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply seven distribution centres in the borough, seven days a week, and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. They are supported in their efforts by West Ham United Football Club, the WHU Foundation, LS185, London Legacy Development Corporation, Newham Council, the Met Police, Spire London East Hospital, Expedient Security and a large number of West Ham and football fans. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thank you for your support. Come on you irons.